Good evening and welcome to the Financial Week. I'm Javon Keyes. Sagico Group says it's making progress in its plans to acquire full ownership of Alliance Financial Services. President and CEO of Sagico, Christopher Zaka, says the transaction is currently undergoing the due diligence process. Sagico has also applied for licenses to carry out cambio and remittance services. We're well advanced and um, so far so good is all I can say. We have reached out to the, all the agents that support the, cambio, the remittance operation and um, there is a strong support for restarting Alliance Financial. What the business will look like, it's going to look like it never stopped. It's going to crank right back up. Cambio, one of the biggest Cambio players, one of the biggest uh, MoneyGram uh, remittance um, licensees and operators. Uh, in, a, in a time when remittances are playing a huge role in Jamaica's economic recovery. Now, Mr. Zaka says it's currently making an assessment to determine the direction of the ePay platform, which is operated by Alliance. Mr. Zaka also says there are no immediate plans to change the name of the company. In February, Sagico announced its plans to take over Alliance Financial Services. This follows charges being laid on the current principles of Alliance after breaches of various regulations to include the Bank of Jamaica Act and the Banking Services Act. National Commercial Bank, NCB, says it's continuing with the hub branch model as part of its restructuring exercise, which was officially launched on December 1, 2021. The bank has established six financial centers located at St. Anne's Bay, Fairview, Mandeville, Maypen, Duke Street, and Constant Spring. Each represent a hub that supports a cluster of digital branches and agencies. NCB says the new model is aimed at fostering better sale collaborations that should be sales collaboration amongst teams and closer oversight to ensure service standards to customers are being monitored. Now, last year, NCB downgraded its UE Mona branch and Bay West Montego Bay branches to agencies. Some staff were shifted in the process. Some more company news now. Caribbean Cement saw improvements in profit and revenues in the 2021 year for the 12-month period. Now, the company's profit after tax was $4.3 billion, $1.1 billion more than the profit earned in 2020. Carib Cement's revenue was 19 percent more than the previous year, amounting to $23.8 billion. Now, the company says the financial year's results were driven by increased domestic demand for cement. Despite this, the company says significant costs associated with general maintenance of the plant, along with inflation, affected the business during the year, specifically during the second half. Now, Carib Cement says its outlook for 2022 is cautiously optimistic, weighing heavily on the COVID-19 approach, as well as associated impacts surrounding the macroeconomic conditions of the island. Now to some commodities news, oil jumped 7% today amidst much volatility in the session. The increase was driven by disruptions of the Russian, the Russian exports from Western sanctions, which outweighed hopes for more Iran supply if Washington reaches a nuclear deal with Tehran. Now Brent crude rose $7.65, ending the session at $118.11 a barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude rose $8.01 cent to settle at a $115.68 per barrel, continuing record highs. Now back home, it's costing an average $154.97 for the U.S. currency. $121.05 is the going rate for the Canadian dollar. $207.48 for the pound, while the euro is trading at an average $173.36. The JSC index declined by 1,509 points today, while the junior market index gained 96 points. Among today's winners were SSL Venture Capital Jamaica, Tropical Battery, Fesco, Palace Amusement and Blue Power Group, while on the losing side were Paramount Trading Jamaica, Carbon Assurance Brokers, Margaritaville Turks, Margaritaville Turks US Dollar Shares and Kingston Properties. And that's it for the Financial Week. I'm Javon Keyes. But before we go, here's a look at what's to come in the Business Review on Sunday.